Good evening, everyone, and thank you for being here tonight for a poetry reading in celebration of the release of Master Suffering by C.M. Burroughs. We would like to begin by acknowledging that the land on which the bookstore is located is the occupied, unceded, seized territory of the Peoria, Potawatomi, Miami, and Sioux people. If you would like to learn more, one place to begin or to learn more is by visiting native-land.ca. My name is Carly Nussbaum and I work as the Outreach and Sales Liaison for Women and Children First. We are one of the last remaining feminist bookstores in the United States, so a big thank you for your ongoing support. Our physical bookstore is currently closed, but hopefully that is going to change soon. And you can still order a copy of Master Suffering as well as many more titles from our website at womenandchildrenfirst.com. There's also a convenient buy the book little box at the bottom of your screen. Events are a vital part of our store's mission. And if you are interested in learning more about our events each month, you can sign up for our monthly newsletter or you can check out our website. Uh, coming up on April 2nd, for example, you can join us for a virtual poetry reading with Daniel Borzutsky and Ted Mathis. Now, I have the privilege to introduce the poets who will be reading for us all tonight. And as a note, this event will be recorded and available to share at this link after the event is over. Luther Hughes is the author of A Shiver in the Leaves and the chapbook Touched. He is the founder of Shade Literary Arts, a literary arts organization for queer writers of color, and co-hosts the Poet Salon podcast with Gabrielle Bates and Duji Tahat. His work has been published in Poetry, Paris Review, The Rumpus, New England Review, and more. Andrea Appleby is an American poet, essayist, and editor living in Athens, Greece. Her first book of poetry, Aletheia, was published in 2017 by Black Square Editions, and her autobiographical Mercy Athena was published by Silk Press in 2020. Anemones, a chapbook of poems with art by Paolo Colombo is forthcoming from MAGA Press this summer. Very exciting. And we are so honored to have returning to Women and Children First, C.M. Burroughs. CM is an associate professor of poetry at Columbia College, Chicago. She is the author of two collections, The Vital System and Master Suffering, the collection we're here celebrating tonight. Burroughs has been awarded fellowships and grants from Yaddo, the McDowell Colony, Jurassi Foundation, Virginia Center for the Creative Arts, and Cave Canham Foundation. She has received commissions from the Studio Museum of Harlem and the Warhol Museum to create poetry in response to art installations. Burroughs' poetry has appeared in journals and anthologies, including Poetry, Kalaloo, Jubilat, Plowshares, Volt, and Best American Experimental Writing Anthology. I am so excited to hear these poetry readings tonight. Um, so without further ado, I will hand it off for Luther Hughes, Andrea Appleby, and CM Burroughs. How we forget after Lois Gallo. I forgot I had skin, forgot what happens to bones when they are swamped in sin, bed sheets. I forgot about the bed sheets, forgot the nights he buried my name with his fists, forgot I had fists too. Forgot I had lips to scream. I have forgotten how to scream, forgotten how to pray. Didn't forget I was his prey. Forgot to feel ashamed. Forgot what I looked like in the mirror. Forgot that my eyes matched my skin. If only I remembered my skin, I forgot to blink, to breathe in between the minutes. Forgot. I had lungs to inhale, forgot how to inhale, didn't forget I had holes, didn't forget humans are made of holes, forgot we all end up in holes, did I mention my skin? Still no memory of what skin looks like wrapped in soil, 
Forgot skin soils. I forgot myself and the language of sorry and stop and no and don't and please. Forgot where I go when I die. Is it heaven or my backyard? Forgot that black fades after a while. Forgot humans fade too. Sometimes we are left to wear the words of others to keep from committing suicide. I forgot how to commit suicide. Is it before or after the bed sheets? Should I wait before or after the end? Hey, hey, hey. Sorry, I read a poem first because you know my nerves be doing things. So I read a poem first, get the nerves out, and then like, you know, talk to y'all because y'all are here. Um, I'm just so glad to be celebrating CM. I am I have long been a fan of CM, of course. Um, ah, CM was my, you know, unofficial mentor at Columbia College Chicago. Took me under her wing and taught me all the good stuff. And I'm just so happy to be here celebrating her second book, Master Suffering, which is a phenomenal book. Um, I'm reading from my little chappy chap, Touched, um, which I, lo I owe a lot of... Um, a lot of um, the book's creation to um, CM and her and her brilliance and just, you know, her work has inspired me so much. And this, this chapbook is literally a um, homage to CM's brilliance. Um, one more from the book, one more from the chapbook and then some newer stuff. But, you know, I had to start off with, you know, this, these things here. Alternate ending with weeping. But I am human. I repeat it, finally, without him inside me. This open space where once was skin, was a pulled back shirt, was hands combing. Behind there was a backyard of things I couldn't tell you. Now, I'm sorry. I'm sure he was good. He said it sometimes when kissing, but without actually saying. He would force a bend for me, a degree to which meant welcome. I didn't know then. If anything, I was twinned at the mouth. It was slender. Beside me, an empty fireplace, that abyss growing less happy. You have heard it before. Relax. Relax. I instructed nothing of limbs, legs, arms, unballed fists. I had to expand from the inside, be brighter. A window half split to dawn's rituals. Sunlight knitting the basket of trees, winnows, their melodies sitting on the sill. A man reading on the front lawn across the street. That's a chappy chap. Um, now just some, you know, some newer poems from the forthcoming book, A Shiver in the Leaves. Um, and, you know, I tried to read some poems today that, you know, kind of aligned with CM's new book coming out, um, which is, again, is phenomenal. So um, this is what I'm thinking for tonight. <clears throat> Excuse me. My mother, my mother. When I was a child, I would run through the backyard while my father yanked dandelions, daisies, thistles, crab, grass, mowed, rearranged the stones around the porch. The task of men, though I didn't know, lushed with cartoons and chocolate milk, one Saturday I found a bee working a dandelion for its treasure the way only God's creatures can, giving and giving until all that is left is the act itself. And there's faith, too. My mother used to say in her magnolia lilt, it comes as it comes. There's a road to follow. When I swat the bee, I plea in triumph. My father, knee drenched in manhood, grins, and his gold tooth glistens a likely tale. 
And when the bee stings my ear, I run to him screaming as my mother runs outside hearing her only child's voice peel back the wallpaper. She charms my ear with kisses. This afternoon, I notice a bee trapped inside the window as my mother on the phone tries to steal her voice to say her mother has died. I wonder if he can taste the sadness the man on TV tells the other. The bee is so calm. The room enlists a fresh haunting and the door frame bothers. To believe her when she says, as the bouquet of yellow roses on the dresser bows its head and the angles of my clay bloom with fire, it'll be okay, is my duty as her son. My mother sits in the hospital in San Antonio, motherless. My mother is now a mother without the longest love she's ever known. My mother, who used to wake up before the slap of sunrise with my father to build new rooftops. My mother, who wrote, I pray you have a great day, on stupid notes tucked in my lunchbox. My mother, who told the white woman in Ross to apologize for bumping into me as I knocked over a rack of pantyhose. My mother, who cried in SeaTac Airport as I walked through customs, yesing the woman who asks, is it his first time moving from home? My mother who looks at me with glinted simper when the pastor spouts disobedient children. My mother who was told at a young age she'd never give birth, barren as she were. My mother, my mother, what rises inside me, I imagine inside her, although I've never had a mother leave this earth. I've never been without love. Just two more poems. Um, you know, the poem I just read, why I love it, besides it being about my mother, is it's about a B2. And you know what? I finally told myself, I'm going to write a B poem. And I wrote that B poem. And I was so proud of myself. Now I'm in a whole lineage of B writing people, right? It's great. Um... Cool, cool, cool. Two more poems so I can get out the way and y'all can hear the rest of these brilliant, brilliant women. Inside the river, I covet. I have, he says, never seen lips like yours. And I am serene here, fastened by stacks of CDs, refusing the corner, but squashed on the wooden table, ash and ash, a half eaten, half brown apple he offers me. And the moon, too soon on its last leg, drunk on the smallness spring breaks, beetles beside us while we watch Monica hoop with Quincy in his dorm room on TV, muted, bumping its head to what we listen to. Girl, you look good, won't you back that ass up? You a fine motherfucker, won't you back that ass up? The curt smell of cigarette smoke, he exhales, soaks the room in a whisper. The silence splays open and Monica scores. I ask him why he moved to this city. Take a swig of the whiskey I brought in a nameless bottle, nearly a memory of itself. To get away from my ex, he shifts in his skin. He was crazy as hell. I, after promising myself I wouldn't, grab his pack of cigarettes, smack, smack, smack against my palm. Here, let me light it for you, he says. And the bluebird in his eyes scream, sweeten the nicotine pirouetting in my lungs as, from outside, your neighbor? I ask, he nods, a man yells, why am I always the last one on your list? Whatever is in the air settles. How will I tell him I came to receive his cruelty? Another swallow of whiskey wings and I look at him, silken, domestic, shirtless. Was your ex black or white? He is calm as he expels black. I only date black men. 
I wanted to spoil beneath the splinter, the long-tongued thorn. But is it ill of me to have let lust weed my blood? I have, I know, been better. And we monkey into the shower. How skillful the steam outlines our friction as he forces the shower head up my ass. You'll be so clean, he says. I will trust be clean enough for him to whittle inside me. Clean me, O oh Lord, like light from a train threading its way through the city. Back on the couch. River dry and arrested under. Let me lick you up and down till you say stop. His fingers branch around my waist. I become his honeyed hanker, his in too deep voice. You like daddy inside you, his spit and purr and butter, his snake at the neck of my blackness, my blackness. Um. You know, that was an experience <laughs> for me walking into that man's house. And, you know, he was playing um, Pokemon Go at the time I walked into his place. And his avatar was a black man. He was white, obviously. And it was not in the poem, obviously. I was like, is this your person? He was like, yeah. And I was like, why is he black? He was like, you know. I think I'm black sometimes. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a fun night for me. Um, did not see him again. So uh, this is my last poem. Um, and again, thank you all for being here to celebrate CM and her new book. It is much appreciated to be in your presence, even though I can't see your face, um, to all celebrate her. Pass down to my father, Luther Hughes Jr. Yes, I'm the third. Cool. That's the way. You see him? Dead now, you said. Her and her dead too. Your face so unchanged in the year of rain. It wasn't the year I loved a man with a head bald like yours. But after summer, I worked in Puget Sound and you were happy I was home. The city told me best, your grandfather is dead. Since you have the same name, it's safe to assume part of you is dead too. The living room never settled so kindly. On the walls, pictures of your new children who later that year refused to buy your pills. You cried on the phone to me said sorry, the year of crying, the year of cracking into men and the men ridding themselves. I have the same name too, the year of collective dying. What I thought was mine belonged to you first. To think otherwise was foolish of me. When your father died, the crow sorrowed the sky and the field lost its green heart. It was out the blue, you showing me the old photo, digging it out from a box beneath the TV. You look like him, a man told me, meaning my grandfather, meaning already faded, a sapped star. He clothed me carefully like a tradition like a bitter chain passed down through generations. Forgive me for the meaning I make of this. You gave me a chain with your father's gold ring. It broke. I never told you. Forgive me for being careless with your mourning. Forgive my bones, my healthy little animals, for bringing his face into your house. I'm glad my dad got us out of Mississippi, you said, voice sprouting for the first time after months of surgeries. I sat, picture in hand, eyeing all the dead smiles the ground has grown tired of. The year of extreme heat, you said. You opened the back door, and the city, being merciful, gifted a breeze. Thanks, y'all.
That was gorgeous, Luther. Thank you. Um, hey, everybody. Can everyone hear me okay? I hope so. I'm actually going to turn off my camera while I read, um, but I will be with you. Um, bear with me while I figure this out. All right. So I'm going to open, um, I'm going to read mostly tonight from my, from my first book, Alethea. Um, and then just a couple new poems um, after that. What heroes are in the confused modes of consequence, mendicant, dancer, the mirroring day peels back, glows in a solaceless wine of light. What you want is craving cut like rope, ready for use, but it doesn't work that way. Tea olive blossoms hang small and deadly. It is hard to remember the past, except to bear it. A scar, a trace, an absent, absent weight. Figures of, of illusion, fetters of thought. We know exactly what becomes of our ravenous bodies. Driven to pasture. Some days I'm desperate, like I left home last week. There's something terrible gaining on me. The world will tie it out, leave me on some ledge. Other days I'm disinterested, a card player, a fully absorbed actor. It will all come, as they say, to a heap of nothing. So I suck the bloom of the hour, and sometimes I sit alone on my stoop. The world refuses the metamorphosis requested by the heart. And so one travels, the stars wheel on in steady course. A long song ensues. Without mark or heed, horses are so racing, now together, now apart. The fields spread out and air tasting of salt and blood mixed. A life divides itself, covered and pulled, the long years strung out across our backs. In many ways without rest, mending in disaster, looking on calm. The weather picks up, the weather drops. A woman's heart has terrible strength. As with dusk or rainfall, it disperses into nothing, and from nothing, it gathers again. The things we see when awake are death. One, there's no cure for sorrow. We just keep living. Death takes nothing from us. That's how we frame it, from the near side. Two, there is this trick in seeing a flight of stairs pulling you up and drawing you down at once, keeping you there, your hand on the rail, a resting bird. Three, Sometimes you sense it in deep creases of shadow, the smooth turning wheels of huge vehicles. What sinks and is folded down, crushed, when the high starless night heaves back into its narrows, then buckles open like a burning thing. A new day begins. Walls, 
The nearly useless stars are still frustratingly relevant. Given how sweetness chooses poison, pursuit of oblivion, or anything not that hell obedience. Given pleasure, dread, lust, vanity, loss, laments without name. May blood bless the weapons we find on our way. So that's, that's it from um, Alethea, and I'm just going to read now the first poem from Anemones, um, the forthcoming chapbook from Magra um, this summer. Strange sounds fill my body, fires lit in a burned oven, speak again for a world to come into itself. It begins in an invisible drift. Who lays a gift in the mountains for some god to favor? A flower, a piece of meat, a smooth stone. That on the threshold of hesitation, there will be someone to call to. And this last poem is uh, a recent poem from a series I'm doing uh, on my Patreon project. And uh, I will close with that. Apotropaic. As a child, I collected things, an awl, a pestle, a paintbrush stem, crochet hooks, nut picks, record needles, the tongue of a bell, shapes dispensed of purpose. In the slant light on the sill, they filled me with a concern like love, which I multiplied by the number of the stars. Who else could understand and tend them, their lost labor, their perfect incompleteness, their certainty, having nothing to do with the living. Later, I found that in rooms of those recently dead by suicide, a kind of existence lingers on the surfaces like a note slipped under the door, blank except for a fragrance. They're strangers, I only see them in dreams. Don't worry about me. A soul tasked with counting grains of sand or emptying the sea with a perforated limpet is not more sure of her future. My life is not without its secret pleasures. Lately, the hammering begins in the morning, destroying the interior walls next door. A doctor bought the place. He took one look at me in the lobby and asked if there was something wrong with my heart. That made me laugh. It has grown too strong for me pounding on like a ruthless oar, rowed by ruthless hands. But my mouth is always wet with distant music. Thank you so much, Andrea. And thank you, Luther, you, you two are couple of my favorite people and a couple of my favorite poets as well. And I'm, I'm glad to know you and I'm glad I could bring you into the space with me. It's pretty perfect. Um, so, you know, I'm glad to be in this room celebrating Master's suffering tonight. And uh, I'll read a handful of poems from the book. Um, they will include, I think my dad is here tonight. So, hi dad. And um, they'll include a poem from my father and a poem from my mother.
body as a juncture of almost. It is female. It is girl parts, ready to suffer, predilection for, ready to try to live. I tell it how I became what I am, not forgiving of myself, but forgetting the irrational start. Why should I have wanted so much as to threaten my being? Refusal to recall what I was, the impossibility of this. For three months, captured in a clear box. Look, the clear box. My trying to be, self that I own. I own her, at least. Two. Joy is, is a silver down the causeway yet unlit. The speakers keep saying it is so. Argue, say capture her and her in the midst of gesture, between desire and satisfaction, see stutter of woman, breasts and bone between wanting to have and having, irrevocably wrote discomfort between. Three. I want you to understand what this bracket feels like. Be an active participant in the difficult narrative of body. Fit your body into the bracket. Four, are you reading what I'm handing you? My body hinged to the other hyphen. Do you think about her kneecaps and arched spine? Do you think about her navel and clavicle, her whole? Do you want to look inside? Five, I don't want to hurt you, but watch her understand what it is. Watch her arc through pain too. Is it pleasure? Something from which she doesn't want to run. Stay put in meter of organ and sense what now it feels like to be touched. Like this, again, like this. Six, watch her. Look at me, so much a woman now. Parabola and experience. Muscles at ease with want and its yield. You will need so much empathy to feel her feeling. Basic training for my father. I learned to clean house at age 10 under the instruction of a US Marine, my father, teaching me that a job worth doing was a job worth doing well task turned meditation. My introversion summons space and redundant duties of house. Ritual rescuing of counters under the day's crumb. Esophageal kicks of the hoover in hand. Hypnotic polishing of torchères, side tables, and talons from the hands and feet of mahogany chairs. Lastly, I could sit and survey my balancing song. It was gratifying. I could set my mind to changing a thing and it would change. Incidents for the forgettery. After I scour the kitchen to the alleys of the stove, ring and hang the wash, disappear the garbage, bleach the bath, perfect the beds, its strict corners, he says, it's nice to have another adult around, which resonates to the effect of you are particular skin I want to assuage, as in won't you stay with me forever. What I miss here is the objective hue of his voice, its inflection signifying the wonder he holds for a woman's functional use. I am welcome for my utility, how I might serve, my southern grace having grown me toward the necessity of a tool. Part of this book thinks about religion and spirituality and what happens to those things uh, when we grieve. Um, and I've tried to consider those matters for myself. The unbeliever. For the first time from my mouth, I say, Pray for us. Assuming she gospels in a God and offering I do too. Trundled mm -hmm. syllable, I am a con, 
cowed by the brute strength belief takes, sight unseen, grave bravery to count on invisible, untouchable myth. Pray for us, from my most shallow pocket, knowing I need her faith to carry me. And who is it that trusts a whole body bears us out, its largest hands marbling unbelievers under multilingual incantations? Who is it that harbors kindling for the pastor's devoted mouth, mirrors the evergreen hunger of congregation's hands, giving up the body to be taken wholly elsewhere? Truth be told, there's no proof, just people born back from half light, from the optic nerve's most mischievous macular halos. There are no good answers for trauma, only he'll never give you more than you can bear which is a bald-faced lie. He does, every day, failings to cacophonous to count. There's no good reason why, if he is to be believed, he won't sweep his want across the anathema to set it right. So as part of the book, I wrote a series of poems called God Let and these pieces are actually based on conversations uh, I've had with friends about their religion, their spirituality, and I would have these conversations and then go write a poem that kind of touched toward that vein. So. God letter. If I could think of him as formless, all energy and myth, I could believe better. Dear Van, <laughs> Thank you for saying that spirituality explains what science can't. This makes sense to me, mostly because I needed language that worked outside figures mimicking the human form, i.e. God and Jesus. Does spirituality exist at the end of knowledge? It was you who told me Einstein didn't believe in a personal God, but in Spinoza's God, who reveals himself in the orderly harmony of what exists which makes me think of nature poetry, how harmony, to borrow the word, can occur. And I know, I know the writer is God, but skipping that, I am impressed by Einstein permitting himself multitudes, space to critique one belief and occupy another. I've never understood religion as liberated, but as rigid order of ritual, and the force of him is powerful in the Baptist church where I grew up. Van, what I find important is your desire to learn and your openness to spirituality. It is lush and teaches me to, to be a scholar of belief, an informed believer, if I should come to that. God letter. Do I have to dress up or can I wear jeans? Dear Joaquin, casual Sunday is a plus. Can a woman be fully present in heels? Remember the other day at the shops, we saw the t-shirt that read blessed across the front. I know you picked it up for me as a joke, but it made me pause. I think I am blessed in the way I understand people to mean it, having good fortune. But this is where faith messes with my clean concept because practicing Christians don't believe blessings come out the clear blue sky. So here's God again, all up in the Kool-Aid. I'm dating myself, but I mean that he gets in the way of spiritual minimalism. He is at once contained and uncontainable, which intellectually is hard to understand. So being blessed must require that one acts in such a way that presses God to bestow blessings, which isn't the same thing as good fortune. But I want to believe people are saying, you have such good fortune, I hope for good fortune too because it means that no one is preaching at me like, you have good God, God, Father God, I hope you've got for us to go with God, etc. Supposition for my mother. Let us admit there has been division enough, our teeth, its simplest actors. Let us admit the past, our translucent bodies betrayal, good natures, good windows. We were, weren't we, movable, series of solid matters sected. Midlife and mothered, 
historical warnings hum, don't split the pole, so as not to forget oneself, so as not to be beguiled by the menagerie present, for any seer by section percusses elemental tension and yoke attention to see oneself and one's companion starkly on this side of the divining pine. If you split the pole, better to graft your error, better to write your route than to risk misfortune's unrelenting map for your mother and her mother and hers, for the lot of us, the clot of us regarding the unsteady water, unsteady water in familial gourds at our feet. And I have one more poem I'm gonna end on here. To be saved. The signs begin incrementally. Smallly they plumb, then dilate under the skin as egg, so that we are forced to acknowledge each incident, sometimes very human, the body shepherding itself to the bathroom in the night and back again, gasping where a toe smashes into the bed's simple feet. For a moment, we wake to radiant pain, opening as pure sound, sometimes very metal. There is worry that prol proliferates like operatic throats. Signs happen such that we are always gasping and awakening. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hi, so I wanted to come on briefly and thank you all so much for the beautiful poetry tonight. Um, but before we wrap up, I had just a quick question I wanted while we have you all here. I'd love to hear what's coming up for all of you with your writing and because I think we could all use it. Um, what has been bringing you joy these days? Uh, I'll start. My brother just had a new baby and she's the most beautiful thing. And my whole family is brimming with excitement over this. And I'm in Chicago, but I can't wait to get back south and meet her. So that's all of my joy right now. <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks. Um, I I have to say that um, I'm here in, in Athens, Greece, and it's just been a gorgeous week. The light is changing and the days are getting longer. Um, and that's bringing me a lot of comfort and pleasure. And writing poems. I have a um, an essay that'll come out uh, in the next Tupelo quarterly issue on um, reclaiming the body through erotic expression, looking at the art art, um, poems, poems, poems. Mm -hmm. Um, well, I am not writing at all. Um, that feels freeing to me in many ways. Um, but what's bringing me joy right now, so I told myself for this year um, to read one gay novel a month. And so uh, um, that's been giving me joy, um, particularly because, you know, in my in my heart of hearts, I think I'm a fiction writer. Like in my heart of hearts, I think I am, um, but I know I'm not. And so, reading novels uh, reminds me of the little Luther who wrote short stories in school and things like that. And so, that's been giving me a lot of a lot of joy. And I'm a sucker for like a good a good heartwarming like love story. And so, um, yeah, I've been I've been really into that lately. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, Luther, I have to um, say I'm with you on the not writing um, between the business and the pandemic. I'm just putting away all the paper and I marvel at writers like Andrea who still have the language coming and can write it down. Um, but I'm I'm all here for Andrea's forthcoming work and um, very excited for that. Well, again, thank you all so much. And thank you to everybody who is here with us tonight in celebration of master suffering. Um, we are so grateful to have had you all with us and I hope everybody has a good night. Any last, last words? 
Thank you guys. This has been amazing. I really, really loved it. Yeah, thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye.